welcome to another YouTube video. It's a weekly energy video for the week of July 18th through the 24th. I've got a brand new setup here in what I'm calling the blue room, because it's blue. Um, I kind of miss my golden crown of stars at the top, but you know, this is just temporary and I'll, I'll be setting up a, a new looking setup here. This is just for the moment because there's a lot of changes going on in the house right now. Uh, but it's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. Um, what's happening this week? Um, well, it'll be Leo season by midweek, which is a lot about um, expression and sort of like bodaciousness. Just um, Leo rules the fifth house of creativity. Um, so there's there's something about expression wanting to be um, a focus in the next coming month. Uh, but as well, we have um, Venus moving into Cancer. That's happening actually at the top of the week. I think that's tomorrow. Um, so in in, in, in in a Taurus moon midweek. So it's like there is this week wants to be stable. Like there's a search for stability through vulnerability or through some kind of tenderness. Um, Taurus can also be stubborn. There's Taurus energy this week. So it's, um, it's asking you to not be stubborn and don't look for material. Don't look for yourself for self-respect within material things versus, um, um, maybe more feeling things. That's the Venus in Cancer, right? But Venus also rules Taurus. Let's see what messages want to come out around these themes. Um, by next weekend, it'll be the moon will be in Gemini again, so it's just another time for um, communicating ideas, studying. Um, be your own muse. Be your own muse, although there might also be opportunities for collaboration in some end. Let's see what we got here. The third quarter moon adjustments are required. That's how I feel about this setup right now. Will it focus? It would be nice if it did. <laughs> then we have nothing is yet set in stone. Yep. No, it's on auto, so I don't know what's going on. Adjustments are required. Nothing is set in stone. New moon in Virgo, a time to give rather than take. This definitely reminds me of the Gemini moon of, you know, very changeable, excitable energy. And that's what this week is culminating on. So new moon in Virgo. Um, this is sort of showing me, you know, Virgo is health service assessment. So what, which of those three categories speak to you and what needs to be worked on? So like for some people, this could be about adjusting your routines, your schedules in a way that suits, that feels healthier for you. Um, it could be tweaking something in a way that is practical for you, but um, meaningful for somebody else. We have the magician underneath. It's not the first time the magician has come out to play this week. Man, it's not gonna focus, is it? Oh well. We got the magician underneath. The seven of cups. Four of wands. Ten of swords. Okay. It's like the thing that you desire is changing. The thing that you're committing yourself to has changed or has ended. The Emperor, the Knight of Cups, the Queen of Cups. It's like somebody comes across your path that you have a lot of love for, 
There's Nine of Pentacles, Knight of Wands, and the Star. Yeah, I see you getting very excited about something, but you're also, you're not, you're not rushing in physically. There's a lot of excitement, but it's also very like stable and settled. There's a, there's a, a lot of emotion here. And it also kind of feels uncertain. So I feel like the uncertainty is what's causing this, um, this Ten of Swords fear around a commitment. It's like you want a commitment, but something isn't quite settled. So I think you want to, this is very Venus in Cancer, where it's like you're, there's like a very tender approach to something as a means of, I don't want to say controlling it, but just like, this does feel like, oh my God, can you see it? The, uh, the Emperor and the Knight of Cups. This feels like a, like, um, like chivalrous, some sort of romantic gesture to ward off any insecurity around a commitment. I mean, it doesn't have to be romantic either. It could just be that like something is not like maybe it's about a deal or something and you have a fear that that somebody you're work, going to be working closely with is waffling. And so there's like uncertainty about which way it will go. Like either this will be a long term positive thing or they will completely stab me in the back. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, I love seeing the cups here. I feel like it's saying that either you or someone you're dealing with will approach the situation from a place of feeling, but not from a place of, um, you know, I'm getting the message kindness is not weakness, like you or they will be kind. And they will be thoughtful um, in a way to assuage your fears or something. But they're going to be very direct and sort of, again, for lack of a better word, just like in control of the situation, as in just trying to keep things in order, trying to keep things from falling apart. Because I don't think it wants to go the way of the Ten of Swords. I think that this wants to go the way of the Four of Wands, which is commitment. There's like, there's the nine of pentacles, which is luxury. This is, this is very much Taurus energy of like, like opulence, like somebody here, it's showing me that there's like somebody you're dealing with has a lot to offer, or this might be you like having a lot to offer enough to share enough wealth to share from like, like your own inner world of richness, like of wealth, like how, however you've developed your own self-confidence, the way that you live your life has been working for you. And so you, you have the ability to share this with another person, um, in a way that develops the relationship and makes things feel exciting. Um, I think that instead of being afraid of this connection, wh whichever side of this equation that you're on, I think it's saying to step into more into your compassion, more into your inner connection, like with yourself, the queen of cups, she's very intuitive. She's very in her inner world, in her, in her, in her inner world. And then we have the hope card. There's a lot of hope for the situation, the stars, hope, healing, comes right after the tower. So what is, as, as a underlying theme for this reading, what does the magician mean? The magician is Gemini. This is coming back to the Gemini moon, the Gemini moon weekend that we're gonna have. So it's a good time to be open and just share your feelings, um, be spontaneous create harmony between thinking and feeling. 
yeah? Because it's the thinking that gets us in our Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords is very brain, ego driven. This is what wants to end. And this was what wants to come in, the Four of Wands. You know, with, with it being turning to Leo season, I think something to add to this message would be to like be kind and loving without expecting anything in return. I feel like whether you're on the receiving end of this or you're giving um, love and kindness, it's good to not expect anything in return. Things aren't always so reciprocal in an obvious sense. Anyway, you give good energy in one direction and then you'll get good energy coming in to your life from another place. Uh, here's another message that I'm getting, just sort of looking at the moon cards. Adjustments are required. It's almost like if you're the kind of person who really likes to rule their life and like be in total control of every twist and turn and decision and and that maybe some advice would be to loosen the grip a bit and just let yourself be guided this week see what shows up see where the adjustment is if you're not yet sure where that is Um, for some people this week, there's a message of somebody might be moving, like physically moving. Then I see two knights and the four of wands. The four of wands is a commitment card. It's also like the home and knight is movement. So you're moving with somebody or two people are moving in together or something like that. Nothing is yet set in stone or you're thinking about moving in with somebody. I mean, it is summer. It's the time to be doing that. We'll get like two more cards, three more cards. Could just be about traveling too. Two people traveling together, making a home wherever they are. Yep. And then we have the Six of Swords, which is the travel card, the moving card, moving something, leaving something behind, but moving on to calmer waters. The Seven of Wands, which is victory. That is victory, isn't it? Or no, Seven of Wands is something else. Uh, maybe this is for the for this final message of this this moving or this transition. If there's fear around some change or some transition this week, it's best to just let it go. I think that there's I'm seeing some resistance in this in this transition. You know, stay optimistic. Stay optimistic because there's like fear on the table. But it's also like not wanting to be here is the feeling. <laughs> so I don't know if this is like a past thing that's like been showing you that it's like time to be afraid, like something's happening or something isn't happening the way that you wanted. Like change is the only constant. And I know that one of the themes for this week was like finding stability in some way. And if we don't have it, maybe that's where the fear comes from. But this week is all about adjustments are required, nothing yet set in stone. Give rather than take. So, you know, you could give generous assumptions. You can give, you know, verbal acknowledgement of like, hey, I don't know what's going on with this. I don't know what's going on with us. Like, help me out. <laughs> um, or there just could be a lot of tension around lots of plans, travel plans or moving. Um, but yeah, whatever it is, I wish you the best of luck. And uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. That's it for now.
thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.